We are still in search of worlds where life could be found. Every day, scientists find more and more potentially habitable worlds. In April 2021, astronomers discovered a super-Earth exoplanet and a bunch of other possible habitable exoplanets. And now we're going to show you what they found. So get ready as we explore these newfound alien worlds. We've got gas giants to show you, where life could be hiding in their clouds, and a weird Neptune-like planet that could be the best candidate for finding life yet. For the last 25 years, astronomers have been finding a wide variety of exoplanets made out of rock, ice and gas. The Kepler spacecraft launched in 2009 and monitored 155,000 stars in just one small patch of the Milky Way. Its mission? To look for tiny dips in starlight caused by an exoplanet passing in front of its star. By the time the spacecraft ran out of fuel in October of 2018, it had found 4,000 candidate worlds among those stars that could be Earth-like. A new analysis of data from the Kepler spacecraft just doubled the number of habitable exoplanets believed to exist in our galaxy. There are at least 100 billion stars in the Milky Way, and 4 billion of those are sun-like. If you figured only 7% of those stars have some habitable planet floating around it, that's 300 million potentially habitable Earths in the Milky Way. Anyone remember Luke Skywalker's harsh desert home planet, Tatooine, that had two suns? Well, researchers in May 2021 reanalyzed some Kepler Space Telescope data and discovered not one, but five Star Wars-style double sun systems that could have one planet each that support life in some form or another. This time, researchers were looking for Earth-like planets with water somewhere on their surface. So they looked at the mass of the binary stars, how bright they were, how big, and how close they were to planets in the system. Researchers now say they found a planet in one of these systems that's cool enough to have liquid water on its surface. It's in the system Kepler-38, about 3,970 light-years from Earth, has a star like ours and another smaller star that orbits it. This system is the best candidate for hosting an Earth-like world with oceans. So far, a Neptune-sized planet has been found orbiting the larger star, and there might be more planets in its habitable zone we don't know about yet. Very recently, astronomers discovered another exoplanet some 90 light-years away from Earth that was a big surprise. Another Neptune-like world was discovered with an atmosphere that could have clouds containing water. TOI-1231b is a bit larger than Earth, but a bit smaller than Neptune. It's eight times closer to its star than our planet is to the Sun. The surface temperature was measured to be about 60 degrees Celsius. Even though it's too big to be habitable, it's the coolest exoplanet ever found and will be a perfect target for the study of exoplanet atmospheres. By the way, we've heard some strange new things that have been discovered on the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. If you want to hear more about that, then sound off in the comments. It's true that most of the super-Earth exoplanets we find and call habitable end up being too hot to support life. A good example of this is a planet orbiting the star Gliese 486. It's a hot, rocky super-Earth with a mass of 2.8 times of our home planet and it's 30% bigger. The problem is that this super-Earth has a temperature of 700 Kelvin. However, even though it's so hot, this planet has kept part of its original atmosphere and that was discovered using transit photometry and radial velocity spectroscopy. Another example of a scorched super-Earth was just discovered 36 light-years from Earth named GJ740b. It's a potentially rocky world that has a mass of 2.9 Earths and takes 2.4 days to orbit its star, a red dwarf that can't be seen from Earth. However, this planet is no place to call home, with temperatures as high as 829 Kelvin and the surface probably looks a lot like Venus. It seems like finding exoplanets that could have life is turning out to be a tough search. And there are more gas and ice giant exoplanets being found than terrestrial planets. 
This is because gas and ice giants are easier to find by the tidal Doppler shifts on their parent stars from gravitational pull. But they're also more easily seen during transits because of their size and cause the light spectrum to curve and dip a lot more than a smaller rocky planet like the Earth. Is it possible we could find life on one of these gas giants? If we're going to look for life, we shouldn't limit our search to Earth-like planets, and gas giants shouldn't be ignored either. Carl Sagan and Stephen Hawking both theorized that life could exist in atmospheres of gas giants, and out of the thousands of exoplanet candidates discovered by Kepler, the most common of those are hot Jupiter-like exoplanets that orbit very close to their parent star. But these are gas planets we're talking about, with no solid surface that would allow any Earth-like life to exist. But is it possible that some kind of extremophile, a creature like a tardigrade, could be living in the clouds of a gas planet? Gas giants are mainly composed of hydrogen and helium, and even though it might sound far-fetched, it might be just possible that life could evolve in the upper atmosphere of a gas giant. The debate of whether life could exist in the toxic clouds of Venus is still far from over. Scientists had detected the chemical phosphine in the thick Venusian atmosphere, and researchers were saying that something now alive is the only explanation as the source of the chemical. Could gas planets have the same possibility? Chances are good that if we find life, it will be totally different than we expect. Life forms on a gas planet could survive on electrical energy from lighting storms, could get water from vapor in the air, and be able to filter water out of the air they breathe. Or it could even be some type of airborne bacteria that doesn't need to breathe at all, eliminating the need for oxygen. But there is also the possibility of finding a gas planet that's made up of breathable air. Of course, this life form would need to deal with the extreme pressure of living on a gas giant. And there are some big gas giants that have been found. Astronomers found a super gas giant roughly five times heavier than Jupiter, about 1300 light years from Earth. They named the gas giant GOTEM1b, which stands for Giant Outer Transiting Exoplanet Mass. And we're finding a lot more planets like this each day. But going over and reanalyzing old data from the Kepler spacecraft isn't all we've got going for us when it comes to finding exoplanets. There's another telescope out there, the successor to Kepler, and it's finding tons of new exoplanets. It's called TESS, and it launched aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket back in April 2018. Right now, TESS is our best and most adept planet finder, and it's found more than 2,200 candidate planets orbiting bright stars, and hundreds of those could be rocky worlds similar to Earth. Now a new era in the study of exoplanets is just beginning. Using a technique called transmission spectroscopy, scientists should be able to use the Hubble telescope and soon the James Webb Space Telescope to capture starlight shining through the atmosphere of TOI 1231b. Molecules in this planet's atmosphere will absorb slices of light from this spectrum, leaving dark lines that can be read like a barcode and tell us which gases are present. When our new telescopes are finally up and running, we'll be able to discover exactly what an exoplanet's atmosphere is made of, and we'll be able to detect water vapor as well as oxygen, which could mean life. And by the way, you don't just need to be a NASA scientist to find an exoplanet either. Just recently in June 2021, a citizen scientist named Cesar Rubio discovered not one but two gas planets that orbit around a bright sun-like star as part of a project that NASA has called Planet Hunters TESS. It's been in the news a lot lately, but the James Webb Space Telescope won't be the only telescope going up and out into space. The upcoming Roman Space Telescope mission will probably find another 100,000 new worlds as they transit across their host star, and also use a method called microlensing. This is the first telescope that will try to directly image giant planets. Just think about it. Only a few short decades ago, we didn't know if planets were common or rare around other stars. With all these new discoveries, we now have evidence that our own galaxy is filled with other worlds, and some of those worlds might host life. And if you're interested in helping find new planets, you can check out NASA's Planet Hunters website for all the details. What did you think about the video? Do you think we're going to find life on another planet soon? And if we do, how do you think it's going to affect the world? Let us know in the comments and tell us what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching.